There is no parallel in the West for this sort of thing. It's like William Golding committing suicide on the steps of Downing Street after having demanded a change of course by a post-war British Prime Minister drawn from either the Labour or Conservative tradition and also having spent his entire life getting physically fit to a point of military perfection. In the Hagakura, the samurai must never show weakness, even at a point of weakness, and must never speak in a way which undermines his own sense of self or his loyalty to his lord and master. Samurai should strive for this odd combination of fanaticism, steeliness, clearness of thought, and serenity of temper. The samurai should feel no guilt over killing, but the flip side of this is that the samurai is always ready to kill himself in relation to a system of honour. Mishima's life was dedicated to a return of the spirit of the samurai. Japanese culture is distinct from almost all others on earth and is still difficult to understand and conceptualise for many Westerners. Japanese thought is influenced by Confucian, Shintoist, Buddhist, Zen Buddhist and Taoist ideas, uh, or Taoist ideas and a medley of these finds itself in the basis of what it is to be Japanese. One of the cardinal views is that life is dominated by the spirits of ancestors and there's the notion of ancestor worship which makes the family and the line of a family's inheritance extraordinarily important. These spirits are called kami and there's the notion that uh, they can intervene in one's actual life. These are supernatural ideas but one of the tricks of Japanese culture which is very similar to ancient Greece in this respect is that all orders of opinion can accept these beliefs because there are secular and atheistic interpretations of these belief systems as there are purely religious ones. Mishiwu was born into an upper middle class family in Tokyo and was separated from his other siblings by his grandmother at an early age. A weak and rather effeminate child who was divorced from the company of boys on the orders of his grandmother who was obsessed with death and had a rather morbid outlook and was herself quite closely related to key members of the Japanese aristocracy. Mishima had a strange rather twilight childhood up to the age of 12 when his grandmother died and he was reintroduced starkly to the rest of his family. Modern and somewhat psychoanalytical interpretations of Mishima's later conduct and ritual suicide as a political gesture at the end of his life um, concentrate on these early years as a foundation stones of the cult of living death that his adoration of the samurai was to perpetuate. Mishima wrote a wide number of books. Mishima's literary output is divided into two halves, one of which deals with, if you like, quite decadent themes in certain respects. Mishima is drawn to extremes, and in Confessions of a Mask, he's drawn to extremes of auto-mutilation and um, sacrifice of self and the wearing of masks as part of social identity. His most famous work, which he's uh, widely regarded for outside Japan, is a tetralogy at the end of his life um, called The Sea of Fertility, um, which is about the increasing meaninglessness of Japanese civilization as he saw it, dominated by an axis of materialism which was alien to it. Japan began to modernize from what Westerners would call a feudal type of life or pattern of existence in the 1860s and underwent extraordinary modernization, so much so that it is the first hybridized, westernized Eastern society or occidentally oriented Asiatic society seen in Western terms. The doctrines that have ruled Japan 
are essentially those of imperial monarchy, but this was always vitiated by the idea of the shogun or shogunate, whereby essentially militaristic feudal lords representing samurai clans drawn from different parts of Japan exercised the imperial advisory role underneath the monarchical overlay. <coughs> the monarch was seen as appointed by God and was seen as divine. It's important to understand that for most Japanese, until the middle of the 20th century following the defeat, the divinity of the emperor was sacrosanct and was not negotiable and was not subject to discussion. Basically, Japan was changed by the advent of the Second World War and its nuclear-laced aftermath far more than Germany was in the period of Adenauer's successor between 1945 and 1948. Japan had to chart a totally new course after the Second World War. In the Japanese traditionalist belief system, suicide is morally meritorious, which is something that the Western mind finds difficult to comprehend. This is because Shintoism preaches the notion of direct reincarnation as a fact rather than just as an idea that can be spiritually postulated. In samurai rhetoric and law, and these ideas had the force of law for this pre-existent military elite inside Japan, if you were killed or if you committed ritual suicide, you immediately were reborn in a mother's womb 40 days later as a new human being. This meant that in their conception of self, suicide was not the end. Mishima believed that this is what Japan was and is and could be, and he believed that the spirit of the samurai, both male and female, fluctuated in Japan and should be brought back. The liberal Western interpretation of Mishima's life is a failed attempt to return to the samurai verities of old, which remains concurrent with the literary output that is highly revered in the West and outside Japan. Westerners as well as Easterners put Mishima forward for three Nobel Prize citations in the post-war period, yet he never won, partly because another Japanese writer who was very much his literary sponsor won the prize in 1968. And Japanese culture is so difficult to understand from many mainstream Western perspectives that it was felt that in that generational era another Japanese wouldn't win the prize after it had been adopted to one of their own number. So Mishima became gradually aware of the fact that he would have to wait for that. It's widely believed that he deserved the prize, as a number of other major writers in the Western world uh, have done, but have not received it. Mishima's struggle with himself and with literature came to an end with the Sea of Fertility trilogy in the late 1960s, which talks a great deal about conspiratorial groups of small right-wingers who contrived with elements of the post-imperial Japanese military and general staff to overthrow the business, corporate and political <coughs> elite of liberal democratic Japan and reinstitute emperor worship. In one of his essays, Mishima asks, why did the emperor have to become a human being? because traditionally the emperor was not regarded as human in Japan up until about 1945, 46 and thereafter. Mishima made his last stand and his last statement in an East Tokyo army base on the 25th of November 1970 when with either three or four acolytes from his shield society and dressed in largely pre-1945 and imperial Japanese military uniforms designed by himself and with messages or which were pithy statements <coughs> of martial intent which Japanese warriors traditional wear on their body. Swords and daggers, traditionally the samurai has a very long sword, he has two of them and he has two short or stabbing swords. Mishima and his colleagues strode into Mishita's office, disarmed him, tied him up, produced some slogans on banners which they then draped from windows which led to a balcony outside this particular general's office and then marched out to address the troops. After his speech was rejected by the body of the troops, 
he went back into the room and said various Shintoist prayers with his three or four colleagues. He then knelt down and ripped open his belly with one of the shorter of the samurai knives, which is the beginning of the ritual suicide in Japanese warrior culture. At the end of this act, your head is literally severed by another samurai who stands behind you. The head is then held aloft and then prayers are said over the head. His colleague committed ritual suicide in a similar way. It is true to say that his ritual suicide and his demand for cultural revision and national re-emergence caused a consternation in Japan. You have to understand he was the darling of the East and Western media in Japan for quite a long period. He was also widely translated in an era when Japanese writers were not particularly widely translated. He was also widely popular inside Japan, despite being a self-consciously literary writer. It basically caused an enormous civic and psychological shock in Japan. Was Mishima on a trajectory of his own? Did he represent the soul of his people as he believed? Was his act a lonely and masochistic one, totally contrary to the postmodern and westernised wiles of contemporary Japan, or was it in a sense a return, as he would have configured it, to fundamental verities about what it was to be Japanese as against any other nationality on earth?